So in the previous class, I was showing you the notes for motion down the inclined plane. I'd like to show you the continuation, notes for continuation. I would like to continue the same. In the previous class, I have discussed about the term angle of repose. The maximum possible angle of inclination of the inclined surface to the oriental for which the block will be in equilibrium on the inclined plane is called as angle of repose. So, angle of repose is equal to tan inverse nu s. Next, I would like to show you the continuation that is the discussion which I have already done in the previous class. I am going to show you the notes for the same discussion that is the continuation of the notes which I was showing in the previous class. Look at the screen. Block begins to slide down the inclined plane itself under the axis of forces mg, comma, n and friction. If mg sin theta is more than limiting friction u s into n. Of course, n stands for normal reaction as you know. Nu s is the equation of static friction between the block and the inclined plane. or mg sin theta is greater than, you can substitute n equal mg cos theta here on the right side. So, mg sin theta is greater than nu s into mg cos theta. So, we take cos theta to the left side, sin theta by cos theta you can write as tan theta. So, the block tan theta is greater than nu s. So, the block begins to slide down the inclined plane itself under the axis of forces mg normal reaction friction. If tan theta is greater than nu s or theta is greater than tan versus nu s or theta is greater than phi. Here phi is the angle of friction between the block and the inclined surface. So the block begins to itself slide down the inclined plane. The angle of inclination of the inclined plane to the horizontal is more than the angle of friction between the two surfaces in contact. Come on, those who are writing the notes, copy down the notes now. So when the block is sliding down the inclined plane, the resultant force of block is equal to fx means x component resultant force. As explained in the previous class, the component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane in the direction of the motion of the block along the positive direction of x axis. Fk represents the matter of kinetic friction of the block which acts opposite to the motion in the negative direction of x axis. So x component resultant force of block is equal to mg sin theta minus Fk. According to Newton's second law, this will be equal to product of its mass and acceleration. Come on, copy down the notes. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your own time to copy the notes. I'd like to show the notes continuation for this, which I already discussed in the previous class. But the matter of kinetic friction is equal to, given by Fk equal nu k e to n, can substitute n equal mg cos theta. So in the left hand side of the previous equation, that is mg sin theta minus Fk equal mg. I am going to substitute now Fk equal to nu k e to mg cos theta. You get mg sin theta minus, therefore mg sin theta minus nu k into mg cos theta equal mg. You can take mg common on the left hand side, so mg into sin theta minus nu k cos theta equal mg. So the conclusion is that the acceleration of the block when it slides down the fixed inclined plane under the action of forces mg comma n and fk is given by a equal to g into sin theta minus nu k into cos theta. Come on, copy down the notes. So this result we are going to use with directly in numerical problems. This result can be used even in subject to problems 
problems in board examinations because standard result derived in the test books. Next, I am going to discuss the calculation of the acceleration of the block. When the block is projected up along the inclined surface with some initial speed u and left. Those who need more time to copy the notes, they can take a pause and copy down the notes. I am going to discuss the continuation for this. So, next I am going to discuss the case where the block is suppose projected from the bottom of the inclined plane with some initial speed u and left. That means no accelerating force is applied in the block in the direction of the motion while it is moving. I am going to discuss the calculation of acceleration of the block during the retarded motion. You stop writing the notes now, you just listen here, concentrate only on listening to the my explanation. So here the acceleration of the block is, motion of the block is up the inclined plane. But you cannot say acceleration up the inclined plane because it is moving with retardation. The weight, let us consider the force acting on the block. The weight mg of the block acts vertically downwards, which is the gravitational force of the block with earth. The normal reaction force on the block by the inclined surface acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from the inclined surface. The block is sliding up along the inclined surface. I choose the direction of the motion of the block up along the inclined surface as positive direction of x axis. The direction perpendicular to the inclined surface as y axis. The force of kinetic friction or sliding friction on the block by the inclined plane acts opposite to the velocity of the block with respect to the inclined plane. When the block moves up along the inclined surface, the force of kinetic friction on the block by the inclined surface acts down the inclined plane. So don't try to copy any notes at present, you just listen, concentrate only on to listen. Later I will be showing you the notes for what I am discussing at present. So if the line of action of normal reaction is produced backwards, the angle between the weight mg, the angle between the line of action of the weight mg and the line of of action of normal reaction which produced backwards will be always same as the angle of inclination theta of the inclined plane to the horizontal. Can resolve the weight mg to rectangular components parallel to the quadrant axis. Further, you can construct a rectangle with adjacent sides parallel to x and y axis such that the weight mg acts along the Diagonal of the rectangle. The component mg cos theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and opposite normal reaction. The component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane. Here, no accelerating force is applied on the block in the direction of the motion while it is moving. Just the block is projected from the bottom with some initial speed u and left. So y component of the resultant force on the block denoted by fy. You can observe that letter n represents the magnitude of the narrow reaction force on the block with inclined surface. 
which is direct along positive axis. The component Mg cos theta is directed opposite to normal reaction, the negative direction of axis. So, Y component of resultant force of lock is equal to given by F y equal to n minus Mg cos theta. In the present discussion, the block is moving along x axis. The block has no acceleration parallel to y axis. The block has no motion parallel to y axis. The block has no acceleration parallel to the y direction. So, y component of the acceleration is 0, y component resultant force is 0. So, magnitude the normal reaction of the block, same as the magnitude the component mg sin theta, mg cos theta. The magnitude of normal reaction of the block is same as the magnitude of the component mg cos theta. Magnitude of kinetic friction or dynamic friction on the block. It suppose the motor block is given by F k equal to nu k into n, where nu k is the quotient of kinetic friction, but the block and the inclined surface, you can write m n equal to mg cos theta. So, I would like to emphasize one thing here. In some of the problems, the block may first slide down the inclined plane, I mean a fixed inclined plane. Next, it may move up along the same inclined plane. The matter of kinetic friction of the block, when it is sliding up the inclined plane, is given by fk equal nu k into mg cos theta, which is same as the matter of kinetic friction acting on the block when it was sliding down the same inclined plane. Only the direction of the friction will be reversed. The block is sliding up the inclined plane, force of kinetic friction on the block acts down the inclined plane. The block is sliding down the fixed inclined plane, then further sliding friction of the block acts up the inclined plane. But matter of kinetic friction of the block is the same in both the cases. Because matter of normal reaction of the block is same in both the cases equal to mg cos theta, and the quotient of kinetic friction between the block and the inclined plane is also the same in both the cases. So, my resultant force of the block is equal to Fx here, then my y component resultant force is 0. You can write the resultant force on the block is equal to x component of the resultant force. You can observe that the component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane along negative direction of x axis. F k represents the magnitude of kinetic friction of the block, which also acts down the inclined plane in the negative direction of x axis. So, magnitude of the retarding force on the block down the inclined plane will be mg sin theta plus F k, but this retarding force acts down the inclined plane in the negative direction of x axis. So, I put a negative sign here on the left side. Now, according to Newton's law, resultant force of block can be written as equal to product of its mass and acceleration. You can substitute Fk equal nu k into mg cos theta on the left hand side. To calculate the acceleration of the block. Then you can take mg common on the left hand side. So, if we divide the equation with the mass m, we get the conclusion that acceleration of the block during the retarded motion under the action of the forces mg normal reaction fk is given by a equal to minus g into sin theta plus nu k cos theta. So, when the block is projected from the bottom of a fixed inclined plane of angle of inclination theta to the horizontal with some initial speed u and left. 
and the axle is the block during the retarded motion of the along the inclined plane is given by a equal to minus g into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. Would like to also discuss how to find how to compare the time of ascent and time of descent. That means the time taken by the block to move up along the inclined or time of motion of the block up along the inclined surface before its velocity becomes zero. We call time of ascent. And the angle of inclination of the inclined plane to the horizontal is more than the angle of friction between the two surfaces. Then the block slides back to the bottom. In some of the problems, the block may stop and may not slide back to the bottom. That happens when the angle of inclination, theta of the inclined plane to the horizontal, is suppose less than angle of repose, less than the angle of friction between the two surfaces. Because once the block stops, the friction on the block again changes to static friction. So the block begins to slide down itself back to the bottom only when the angle of inclination theta of the inclined plane is more than angle of friction or tan theta is more than us. So I would like to compare the time of ascent and time of descent and, and also I would like to compare the final speed with which it returns to the bottom with the initial speed with which it is projected up along the inclined plane. Let us denote the matter of the displacement of the block for motion up along the inclined plane. So here, let us suppose the block is projected up along the inclined surface from the bottom of the inclined plane with initial speed u. So that its velocity becomes zero after time t1. Let v be the magnitude of velocity when it returns to the bottom of the inclined plane. Let us denote the magnitude of the displacement for motion up the inclined plane. So for motion up the inclined plane or ascent, if you use the formula, I am going to use two equations for both ascent and descent. One is displacement is equal to average of initial and final velocities into time interval. Another equation which we can use for uniformly accelerated motion, for motion in a straight line with uniform acceleration, Vf square minus Vi square equal to 2A, Vi means initial velocity, Vf means final velocity, A is acceleration, S is the magnitude of displacement, T is the time of motion. So these two equations I am going to use separately for ascent and separately for descent. Because acceleration during descent is different from acceleration during ascent. So for ascent, each velocity is equal to at the bottom of the inclined plane is equal to u. Final velocity when it reaches the highest position is zero. Time of motion is denoted by t1. So if you use the other equation, v f square minus v i square equal to a s. Final velocity at the highest position is zero. Initial velocity at the bottom is equal to u. The acceleration when it is moving up along the inclined surface just before we have discussed minus g into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. It's not necessary for you to write the running notes now. I will show you the notes separately after the discussion. Then you can copy the notes. For ascent acceleration is given by minus g into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. So you get u square equal to 2gs into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. For descent, again I use the same equations of motion for descent that is for motion back to the bottom. Let V denote the magnitude of the velocity of the block when it returns back to the bottom of the inclined plane. So initial velocity at the top is in, for, can be taken as zero. Whatever distance it moves up along the inclined plane linearly before its velocity becomes zero. 
same distance try slice back to the bottom so magnitude of the displacement for descent is same as the magnitude of the displacement for ascent again i use the same equation s equal to vi plus vf by 2 into t so initial last state the highest position is zero so the last state the bottom is v time of descent denoted by t2 again next i use this equation vf square minus vi square equal to as so final last state the bottom is v initial last state the highest position zero as i discussed previously the acceleration when it is uh, sliding down the inclined plane under the action of forces mg normal reaction fk is given by g into sin theta minus nu k into cos theta so if you divide this equation this with this equation so you get v square by u square is equal to 2 gs into sin theta minus nu k into cos theta divided by 2 gs into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta so 2 gs you can cancel so you can divide numerator and denominator with cos theta here so sin theta by, by cos theta minus nu k cos theta by cos theta divided by sin theta by cos theta plus nu k into cos theta by cos theta sin theta by cos theta can write tan theta cos theta by cos theta equal to 1 so you get v by u whole square equal tan theta minus nu k by tan theta plus nu k or we can write v by u tan theta whole square equal tan theta minus nu k by tan theta plus nu k you compare again this equation with this equation left hand side is same magnitude of the displacement for descent is same as magnitude of displacement for ascent so equating these two we can write s equal to u t1 by 2 is equal to u t2 by 2 v t2 by 2 from here so you get t1 by t2 equal to v by u that is ratio of times of ascent and times and time of ascent and time of descent ratio of time of ascent and time of descent is given by v by u from this equation v by u can be written as under root of tan theta minus nu k divided by under root of tan theta plus nu k next i am going to show you the notes for the same discussion which i have done just now for motion up the inclined plane i am going going to show you the type of notes or powerpoint presentation of the type of notes for what i have discussed now so those who want to write the notes they can get ready with the notebook and pen again so <clears throat> come on start writing the notes that is for motion on the rough inclined plane if the block is uh, projected up along the inclined surface that is another conclusion which you have to remember which you can straight away use while solving numerical problems even in board exam the block is if the block is projected up along the inclined surface from the, the bottom of the fixed inclined plane with initial speed u and left and accelerate the block during the retarded motion 
the reaction of forces Mg, comma N and Fk is given by A equal to minus G into sin theta plus nu k cos theta. So, come on, write down the conclusion I have shown on the screen. Those who are writing the notes, come on, keep writing. This conclusion which I have done. I am going to show the working for this conclusion. First, I have directly written the conclusion in the beginning. Next, I am going to show you the working part or explanation part for this conclusion, which I already discussed earlier. The same working I am going to show you in typed form so that you can copy the notes neatly. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and copy the notes. So this is the free body diagram for the block. Weight mg acts vertically downwards, which is resolved into rectangular components. mg cos theta and mg sin theta. The component mg cos theta acts perpendicular to the inclined surface. Component mg sin theta acts parallel to the inclined surface down the incline. N is the magnitude of normal reaction force of the block, which acts perpendicular to the inclined surface and directed away from the inclined surface. Fk represents the force of kinetic friction on the block. The block is sliding up the in fixed inclined plane. This force of kinetic friction on the block by the inclined surface acts down the inclined plane. We choose the direction of the motion up along the inclined surface as positive x-axis. Direction perpendicular motion to the axis. Come on, copy down this free body diagram. Copy down the diagram. So, why compare the resultant forces given by phi equal n minus mg cos theta that is 0 or n equal mg cos theta? And magnitude of kinetic friction of the block is given by nu k into n or nu k into mg cos theta. So, resultant force on the block can write fx, that means x component of the resultant force. So, resultant force on the block can write fx. Here, y component of the resultant force, fy is 0. Therefore, resultant force of the block equal fx means resultant of force and component along x axis. The component mg sin theta acts down the inclined plane. Fk represents the matter of kinetic friction of the block, which also acts down the inclined plane. So, net retarding force on the block down the inclined plane has magnitude mg sin theta plus Fk. But it acts opposite to the direction of the motion of the block along negative x axis. So, I can put negative sign outside the brackets. Can substitute here Fk equal nu k to mg cos theta on the right side. Then you can take mg common outside. So, resultant for the block can be written as minus mg into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. Come on, those who are writing the notes, come on, write. Copy down the notes. It is better you write the notes here, particularly those who are in junior and intermediate classes. Those who are listening to the topic for the first time, it is better they write the notes because all these mathematical calculations you can clearly understand and grasp them easily only if you make a writing practice. It will be difficult to digest the subject by just, you cannot read physics as you read like a novel. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your own time. I would like to show the notes continuation for this. When written second law, resultant force of block can be written M E T A. On the left hand side you can write resultant force equal minus M G e to sin theta plus nu k cos theta. Therefore you get minus M G e to sin theta plus nu k cos theta equal M B A. So if you divide the equation with mass m you get A equal minus G e to sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. 
Come on, copy down the notes. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause. I'm going to show the notes continuation for this. Another conclusion, which I discussed earlier. The ratio of times of ascent descent on the inclined plane is given by T1 by T2 equal to V by U. That is equal to root of tan theta minus nu k by tan theta plus nu k. Of course, here understood that U is the initial speed with which it is projected up along the inclined plane. V is the final speed with which it returns to the bottom of the inclined plane. And nu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the inclined plane. The result holds good only when tan theta is more than the coefficient of static friction. Come on, copy down. This conclusion first. I will show you the working for this conclusion next, which I already discussed earlier. In case you need more time to copy, you can take a pause. For ascent, that is for a motion of the inclined plane. Use the equation S equal to displacement equal to average of initial and final velocities into time interval. Initial loss at the bottom is equal to you, final velocity. At the end of time of ascent is 0, T1 is the time of ascent. So you can write S equal to U T1 by 2. Use the equation V square or square equal to A is for ascent or for motion of the inclined plane. Final velocity at the highest position at the end of ascent is 0. Acceleration in equal to minus g to sin theta plus nu k cos theta. S is the distance or magnitude displacement for motion along the inclined plane. So you get u square equal to 2gs into sin theta plus nu k into cos theta. Come on, copy down this working. In case you need more time, to copy this working, you can take a pause and take your time. I'd like to show you the working continuation for this. For descent, again we use the same in these equations. Displacement equal to average of initial and final velocity is multiplied by time interval. For descent, initial velocity at the highest position 0, V is the magnitude of final velocity when it returns to the bottom t to the time of descent. The magnitude displacement for descent is same as magnitude displacement for ascent. Or you can write S equal to Vt 2 by 2. Next using the equation Vf square minus Vi square equal to As for descent. For descent initial loss to the height position 0. Acceleration A equal to G to sin theta minus nu k cos theta. Magnitude displacement for descent is same as magnitude displacement for ascent. So you get V square equal to Gs into sin theta minus nu k cos theta. Equating the magnitude displacement both for ascent and descent, you get u t1 by 2 equal to v t2 by t2 or t1 by t2 equal to v by u. You can substitute, you divide this value of v square with the earlier value of u square we got in the previous step. Come on, finish writing, finish copying. In case you need more time to copy the notes, you can take a pause and take your time. Get V square by U square equal to 2GS into sin theta minus nu k cos theta. U square equal to 2GS into sin theta plus nu k cos theta. Or you get V by U equal to root of sin theta minus nu k cos theta by sin theta plus nu k cos theta. So you get T1 by T2 equal V by U. That you can write root of tan theta minus nu k by root of tan theta plus nu k. Come on, copy down. The working. Next I am going to discuss some special cases. For motion on the inclined plane, there are a good number of questions that were given in the previous entrance examinations and also in different books based on the these special cases.
in case you require more time to copy the notes you can take a pause and take your own time next i am going to discuss the special cases for motion on the inclined plane i am going to discuss the special cases in motion on inclined plane you need not write running notes now you just again start listening stop writing you just listen here i will show you the notes later you first concentrate on listening to the discussion i do let us consider a block or a body which slides down a smooth inclined plane or some angle of inclination theta with a horizontal starting from rest at the top of the inclined plane next let us suppose this slides down rough inclined plane of same angle of inclination theta to the horizontal and same length and same height again starting from rest at the top of the inclined plane Let T1 be the time taken by the block to slide down the smooth inclined plane. Let T2 denote the time taken by the block to slide down the rough inclined plane, rough and fixed inclined plane. The same angle of inclination theta to the horizontal, and with same length and same height. So I would like to find the coefficient of friction in terms of the ratio of the two times and the angle theta. So for motion down smooth incline, we can use the equation as equal to half a t square. The body starts from rest, moves with uniform acceleration. We can write as equal to half a t square using this equation for motion down smooth incline plane. The acceleration for motion down smooth incline plane are denoted by a one. Which is equal to g sin theta, and magnitude of displacement is given by s equal to half y one t one square. Next, I use the same equation as s equal to half y t square for motion down the rough inclined plane. The acceleration of the block when it slides down the rough inclined plane, I denote it by a2. That is given by g into sine theta minus nu k into cos theta. The t2 denote the time taken to slide down the rough inclined plane. Let us suppose t2 is the n times t1. That means time taken to slide down the rough inclined plane is n times the time taken to slide down smooth inclined plane. So again, using the same equation, s equal half a t square for motion. down the rough inclined plane you can write as equal to half a to t2 square so left hand side is same in both equations 1 and 2 so right hand side can also be equated so from first and second equations can write as equal to half a1 t1 square Equal to half a two t two square. So you get a one by a two equal to t two by t one whole square. So on the right hand side, you can substitute t two equal n times t one on the left hand side. You can substitute a one equal to g sine theta. And a two equal to g into sine theta minus nu k into cos theta. And t two is n times t one. 
can simplify this. You can take n square to the left side. 1 by n square equal to sin theta minus nu k into cos theta divided by sin theta. So you can further simplify and solve for question of kinetic friction. So 1 by n square on right side you can write sin sin theta by sin theta first term divide each term separately with the denominator sin theta minus nu k into cos theta by sin theta so you can write nu k into cos theta by sin theta is equal to sin theta by sin theta you can write 1 1 by n square you can carry to the right side so you get nu k equal to 1 minus 1 by n square into sin theta by cos theta. That means if the time taken by a block or body to slide down a fixed or rough inclined plane is n times the time taken to slide down smooth and fixed inclined plane with same angle of inclination theta to the horizontal and with same length. And the question of sliding friction between the block and the rough inclined plane is given by nu k equal to 1 minus 1 by n square into tan theta. Of course, if the angle of inclination of the inclined plane is 45 degrees, theta is 45 degrees, then tan theta can be taken as 1, tan 45 degrees 1, then you get nu k equal to 1 minus 1 by n square. Next, I am going to show you the type form of the same working, same special case again on the screen so that you can copy the notes systematically. So, next, I am going to show the notes for same discussion which I have just now done for case 1. Come on, start writing. Put the heading special cases in motion on a fixed inclined plane. First, I am showing the conclusion. In each case, first I will be showing you the conclusion in each case, so that you can straight away use the conclusion while solving objective type questions. In case you are given a question based on this one of these special cases. But you must also know the working behind each conclusion, so that in case you forget the conclusion, should be able to arrive at the same conclusion with calculation from concept. So come on, start writing the notes. First, copy the conclusion. I will read out the conclusion for case 1. The time taken by a body to slide down a fixed rough inclined plane is n times the time taken to slide down a smooth and fixed inclined plane of same length and same angle of inclination theta to the horizontal. Then the coefficient of sliding friction between the block and the rough inclined plane is given by nu k equal to 1 minus 1 by n square into tan theta. Come on, copy down this conclusion first. In case you need more time to copy the conclusion, you can take a pause and take more time. I'd like to show the working for this conclusion on the screen. For motion on smooth inclined plane, acceleration is given by A1 equal to G sin theta. And magnetic displacement is given by S equal to half A1 T1 square. That is using the equation S equal to half A D square, which you call equation 1. For motion on rough inclined plane, acceleration is given by g into sin theta minus nu k cos theta. And again, using the same equation as equal to half a t square for motion on the rough inclined plane, you can write as equal to half a2 into t2 square. Here, t2 is the time taken to slide down the rough inclined plane. t1 is the time taken to slide down the smooth inclined plane. And a1 is the magnitude of acceleration when it slides down the rough inclined plane. And a1 a2 is the magnitude of acceleration when it slides on the rough inclined plane, and A1 is the magnitude of acceleration when it slides on the smooth inclined plane. So, in equate the right hand sides of the two equations, from 1 and 2, you can write as equal to half A2 T2 square, which can be written as equal to half A1 T1 square. 
और ए टू बाय ए वन इक्वल टू ए वन बाय टी टू होल स्क्वेयर कम ऑन कॉपी डाउन दिस वर्किंग टिल नाउ कॉपी डाउन द वर्किंग अप टू हियर इन केस यू नीड मोर टाइम टू कॉपी द वर्किंग कैन टेक अ पाउस एंड टेक योर टाइम So on the left hand side, I can substitute a1 equal to g sine theta in the denominator, and a2 equal to g into sine theta minus nu k into cos theta on the in the numerator on the left side. On the right side, I can substitute a2 equal to n times t1. Therefore, g into sine theta minus nu k cos theta divided by g sine theta equal to t1 by n t1 whole square. Right side, t1 gets cancelled. Left hand side, that zero is equal to g gets cancelled. So you can divide each term on the left hand side separately. Each term in numerator with the denominator sine theta. You get sine theta by sine theta minus nu k into cos theta by sine theta equal to one by n square. Sine theta by sine theta, you can write as one on the left side. One by n square can carry to the left hand side. This term contains equation of Kennedy friction can carry to the right side. So you get one minus one by n square equal nu k into cos theta by sin theta. So from this you get nu k equal to one minus one by n square into sin theta by cos theta equal nu k. And nu k equal one minus one by n square into tan theta. Come on, copy down this working. So I have discussed only special case one for motion on the roughing line plane. There will be another three or four special cases. for more on the roughing line plane i'll be discussing the other special cases in my next class